a smart meter and I'd like to thank Andy and Lucas for sending this. They were out walking, they discovered a pile of sort of builders rubble and rubbish and in amongst it was a couple of meters. And there is a name printed in this meter. They contacted the company involved and sent a message and said, do you want your meters back? Because we found them here and we just wondered if you knew about it. And the company didn't respond. So instead, they sent them to me, which was the correct thing to do. I have covered the serial numbers here to protect the innocent and me. And this is the second take of this video because I got right inside and discovered another serial number. Oh dear. So let's uh, try that again, shall we? I'm kind of interested in seeing all the safety features and seeing if it's, you know, this is how we would have designed it for, for security. So typical of these meters, you've got the bottom cover comes off and they're all sealable. They have sort of a wire goes through here and then a little crimp goes on, then just folds down out the way. We have the four terminals at the bottom here. We've got live in, common neutral in the middle and live back out again. The common neutral bit surprises me. I thought they might actually monitor live and neutral current flow independently to detect if people were trying to bypass the meter in some way. It has a keypad. I'm guessing this is an option for people who have maybe fallen behind their bill and they can buy credit and type a code in that will give them X amount of credit. Uh, it's got the infrared communicator that's quite common in most modern meters, uh, which that's got a magnetic plate around it and you sit a little device over and it lets you access various parameters. This one has a modem. This is interesting. This is an actual smart meter, and if we pull this off, it reveals for a start. Uh, I should go back to this one. It reveals that if you take the cover off, this uh, carbon loaded rubber pad presses down onto these gold flash contacts down here, and that's how this unit detects. If you take this cover off, it will either flag it off the meter or it could send a code to the base and actually snitch you in if you'd cover, take that cover off. Likewise, when you take this off, it's got another pad that goes onto these two gold pads, and that would also tell that the uh, that this section would be taken off. There's also a couple of ports here with nothing in them, and going to these pads, I don't know if that's for testing purposes or it's just an auxiliary couple of contacts. Don't know. And then there's a 10-pin connector here that just mates with this and presumably does power and data. Let's get into this. Uh, the SIM incident. I, I'll hinge this up. There is a SIM in there. It's got part of a number on it visible there. It's a plain white SIM, I'm guessing. It's actually probably the local telecommunication company here because no matter where you are in the world, one of the biggest data companies for uh, providing uh, data services for on all the mobile phone networks is Manx Telecom. It's just an odd quirk because it's such an old, long-established company. This also has a external port facility for the antenna, which can go out the, the side here. So if you have a meter in a remote location with poor reception, it can uh, communicate. I'm just making sure there's not too much incriminating evidence here. Cautious about showing serial numbers, particularly given this meter has an unknown history. So it's got an ARM chip in it, an ARM chip. Um, it's got the modem chip. It's got another little uh, communicator, local communicator. Could this be for uh, Bluetooth communication or short-range programming communication? Not sure. The unit here has two cables coming off. It's got a cable coming off from underneath that is going to this connector. There is another label under here. I should uh, not show that. And there's another little black wire coming down onto this, which is a printed circuit board, printed antenna. Looks quite rugged and accurate. And that's fundamentally the modem. There are a couple of really big capacitors here. I wonder if they're a uh, dying gasp capacitor. The, some modems have the uh, facility that if they lose power, they will use the residual charge of the capacitor to just send a little logging off code or an error code. Maybe that is an anti-tamper device. If you were to suddenly unplug this, it holds enough charge on these big capacitors to actually send a message saying, tamper detected. In which case, no, how would it, oh, it would detect itself being unplugged? Because that, this can only signal to the actual uh, meter itself. Interesting stuff. Let's get all this stuff out of the way to make more space. 
I should also mention that there's a lot of paranoia about how the new meters are using this special radiation network called 5G and it gives you cancer. What a load of shit, seriously. What people come out with that? The same people who used to say that mobile phones, you hold them up to your head and it's giving you brain tumours. Just anything that comes out at all, it's the blue light from the street lights and it's, oh God, it's just any random thing, the attention seekers jump on it and uh, claim it's bad. Uh, in reality, this unit will transmit, uh, will just communicate the standard cellular network like your phone does. So if your phone was sitting on the table, it will be putting out the same sort of signal strength as this thing will on the wall when it just occasionally checks in. So uh, let's get these screws out, isn't it? Yes, it is. This reveals, covers that bit area there. It reveals the keypad with the carbon pads, another anti-tamper thing. Going down onto this pad here, are they just in series? No, they're independent. Hold on, let's get that off. Notice the scrubbing about here, because I just thought I'll just hide that. I don't know the pedigree of this meter. So it's got the carbon pads that go onto that. It's got the little infrared communicator port that goes onto these uh, emitters here. What's that? Mm. It's got the LCD display. You can see the backlight at the side here. Uh, let's get this out. But this is as far as I got last time. It's not lifting out. The other thing they say is, you know, that it's got microphones and it's listening to your house. That's just... I don't know where this comes from. It's this conspiracy thing that it's going to release chemicals into your house. Let's uh, carefully, in case I've missed it, I'm just going to look at the back of this before we go back into shot. It's got nothing majorly incriminating in it, right? Okay. Down goes that. So, what do we have here? Big, chunky terminals. Very chunky to, and a big relay so that they can disconnect your power if you've not paid your bill. Nice. Oh, that is uh, that is something down there. They've just stood that up. That looks like a Hall Effect sensor, possibly. That may be to detect if people are putting something near this unit, like a really big magnet trying to maybe override the relay in this, perhaps. This is well shielded. What is this? Um, that looks like it might be a little power supply module by the look of it. Um, right. Opto isolators by the look of it there that are going out to the uh, external unit. So is this providing this uh, an inf a communication interface? That's why would it be isolated unless it's just for safety? And then that port has just got a basically a volt, low voltage supply going to it and then sort of like just switch signals or I wonder if it communicates two ways. There's a little lithium cell. Lithium primary battery. These are the ones that have quite a lot of lithium in them because they're designed for super long life and high capacity and they're not rechargeable. Let's see if that has a voltage of about the sort of typical three volts as you'd expect off that. 3.65 volts, that is fully up to spec, it's working. Oh dear, I hope it doesn't power it and send messages. We're tracking you, big live. Uh, is this normally closed or is this normally open? That would be interesting to know. Let's uh, put this to diode test. I would expect that might be normally closed and only powered when they want to disconnect you because that would take the load off it. It is. It's normally bridging through, and it's only when they power that that it's going to disconnect you. That makes sense. This has two taps in it, and a section welded in here. That's weird. Oh, is that for ex higher resistance? Is that a controlled resistance in there to uh, for monitoring? Why would they... Do that as opposed to just me measuring from one end of the copper to the other. I'm not really sure. They do appear to have a, a slug of metal in here that's kind of going to. Let's say I zoom down in that. See that? That's a. I'm guessing that is just an sort of to 
create a higher resistance in a smaller area. Does that result in extra heat? I'm not really sure. Do you know, I'm also looking at this big metal oxide varistor. Is there any protection about it feeling and then going all hot and flustered? It's connected via this track over to the phase in, directly to the phase in. And the other connection here looks as though it's connecting straight to the neutral. So does that mean that if this metal oxide varistor was to gradually fail over time, if that's what it is, it would actually potentially get quite hot in there without anything to cut it out? Not sure. That seems a bit odd. Um, any other Andy Tamber devices? I'm kind of looking for an antenna in here. I don't know if there'll be one, unless that was in the, the upper section, because I'd expect something to detect RF jammer circuitry. And uh, if it detects someone trying to interfere with the circuitry by applying an external radio signal, it could trigger something. I see a couple of pads going up here, but they're not connecting to anything. This looks like a double-sided board. It doesn't look any deeper than that. Oh, actually, no. Is it double-sided or? It's hard to see because it's kind of hidden if it's multi-layer or not. Um, not really an awful lot more to say about this. It's got the sensing circuitry in the vicinity of that. I'm guessing they'll just be using dedicated uh, current sensors that are optimised for that task. Oh, that thing is marked H3. It is a, probably a Hall Effect sensor then. Um, the power supply, I'm guessing then, is that going to be a standard switch mode power supply? Why do they have this big shield over the top of it? I'm not seeing a, a microphone in here. That'll please the conspiracy theorists. Or maybe it won't please the conspiracy theorists. There's a resistor network presumably used for the voltage sensing to correlate to the current sensing. This is where it gets a bit shady. You see, this being a smart meter, they do have a lot more control over it. They can enable various functions. Traditionally, the old meter with the sort of dial that goes round and round inside it is very accurate. It measures uh, the relationship between the current and the voltage. What it measures is real power. These things have the facility to be programmed remotely to measure different things, and one of them is just uh, apparent power, where it just ignores uh, the relationship between the voltage between uh, this connection, this connection, and the current between this connection and this connection, and it will just basically measure raw current and multiply it by the voltage, and that's a uh, that's one of the biggest concerns I have about these things. I've mentioned that before, but this is the reality of it in here. These can also be programmed remotely depending on the tariff you choose. And you know you're going to be talked into these uh, tariffs. are going to say, oh, it's going to save you some money. Yeah, it might save you some money for the first month, but then they're going to change it. They're going to have it in written in small print that they can change the way your electricity is metered. And when they do that, they could do things, they could introduce peak uh, demand. So when they're they're paying a lot more for the electricity, they penalise you directly by saying if you use too much power round about the time you're cooking tea, uh, this unit will charge you twice as much during that period of time. So they're kind of programmable in that sense. Another thing that I've noticed here is that uh, many of the meter readers are being what they call upskilled by generic finger in every pie companies and they're being basically they're being told you can uh, learn how to actually install these meters and it will give you new skills so they're basically being taught how to install the meter that's replacing their job and once all the meters have been installed what are they going to do are they going to lay them off don't know all very odd so uh, that's it is there much else to reveal in here that's that's particularly interesting it's got a simple anti-tamper, it's got the little relay to disconnect the power, it's got a bit of filtering, it's got um, the modem facility, and that's more or less it. I guess ultimately it can work without the modem, it will just act as a plain meter here because it's got a chunky little processor stuffed under there. And that just, uh, the only thing I'm wondering here then is that maybe the power supply is some way re more re receptive to interference in some way, I'm not, I'm not really sure. This looks like a class Y capacitor, but there's no earth in this, so why would that, unless it's coupling it down, it's coupling it to the phase. Dunno. 
It's interesting, it's a bit boring in the sense that it's uh, just heavily integrated and there's not much to see. Um, this resistor comes over here to an inductor and it's got a little pad there. I wonder what that's for. That is that more filtering perhaps? It might be more filtering. It might be the incoming supply. That resistor there might be effective with the fuse. Oh, where's it getting its power from? That's what we want to see. Phase out. Phase out is being monitored for the voltage at the phase out, but not a significant amount of current. The bulk of the power looks, if I'm right in saying that's going from that resistor there, that's kind of going to neutral. The It looks like the power is being monitored from the incoming supply, so it is the electricity company that's paying for the power. That makes sense, obviously, because uh, if they disable that relay, it kills power to the output, and that would uh, effectively stop them, that would power down the meter if they powered it from that side. It's interesting. It's quite chunky. Um, yeah, that's about it. So let me think, are there any other conspiracies that could be covered here? It's the, There's the one about how it's producing harmful radiation. No, it's not. There's the one where it's listening into your house. No, it's not. There's no sign of a microphone in here. Uh, it's not got a camera in it. It's, uh, it's got anti-tamper facilities, but you know what? It's less than I thought, unless they're using some clever detection techniques. I thought it might have more to detect people stuffing wires up the side of the things like that. Unless that plastic's designed to give a bit and break that connection if it does that. Dunno. It's interesting. Certainly looks very chunky and well thought out. Um, yeah, interesting. So that's uh, what the inside of a smart meter looks like.